Chapter 1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Unwilling.translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation, Beep 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 Fanya lay on the hospital bed, listening to the sound of the monitoring equipment. She looked up and saw that the ceiling above her head was badly damaged. She had been in this hospital for three months. Half a year ago, when she was diagnosed with terminal liver cancer, she was sent to the city central's hospital for treatment. However, the high cost of treatment was simply not something Fong Yip could afford. She had no choice but to transfer to this small hospital that was close to the county town for a conservative form of treatment. Even so, Fong Yip did not have any more money to prolong her life. Two nurses pushed a trolley of medical supplies and walked past Fong Yip's ward. One nurse glanced at Fanya's bed and said to her colleague, Bed 3 will be deregulated today. Sigh. How pitiful. Isn't that the same as just waiting for death? The other nurse sighed. It can't be helped. She could not pay up. The nurse did not stop her work and said helplessly. I'm just tired of seeing the same thing happening again and again in this hospital. The nurse continued speaking and she glanced at Fanya again. I heard that she used to have a rich husband. Another nurse could not help but become curious. How did she end up so miserable in her twilight years? Sigh. That's not it. I heard that she used to be the most beautiful woman around, the nurse said and could not help but feel envious. When she married that husband of hers, she originally did quite well. The nurse took out a dose of medicine and gave it to the patient in the ward next to Fanya. After that, she walked out again, her voice trailed off in the distance. It's just that when women get old, men tend to change their hearts easily. This woman is really stupid. The nurse sighed. She didn't take a single cent during the divorce and left with a child who wasn't even ten. She didn't take any money. Another nurse glanced at the bedridden Fanya, and her eyes were wide with surprise. Yes. Otherwise, would she have fallen to such a state now? The nurse checked the medical records in her hands and continued. A divorcee raising a child by herself, and in the end, she got sick and became unable to keep the child. After putting the medical records away, the nurse took the medicine and walked to another ward. What a tragedy! Another nurse stood at the door and asked curiously, what about the child? I heard that she spent a lot of effort to send the child out of the country a few years ago. The nurse walked out and checked the medicine in the cart. She never told the child that she was sick. The nurse could not help but feel sorry for Fanya. Seriously. As the two of them were chatting, a few doctors walked over. The two of them instantly shut up and looked at Fanya with pity in their eyes. The doctors walked into the ward together and confirmed that Fanya had given up on treatment. The doctors and nurses removed all the equipment, leaving Fanya alone in the ward. The beeping sound that had been bothering her for three months finally quieted down. Fanya slowly closed her eyes, letting the darkness envelop her. She was tired. This life was too tiring but a part of her remained indignant. There was a loud noise beside her ears. Fanya frowned and slowly opened her eyes. A bright light shone into her eyes, and Fanya quickly squeezed her eyes shut again. The noise was incessant, and it only seemed to be getting louder and louder. Heaven is actually such a chaotic place. Fanya could not help but grumble in her heart. But then she thought. No, that's not right, that's a place that only Westerners would go to. Then, am I in hell now? Fanya tried to open her eyes again, but what she saw was a familiar room from a distant memory. She was looking up at a decorated ceiling, and she was surrounded by curtains hanging around her bed. Fanya raised her hand and rubbed her eyes to confirm everything in front of her. Isn't this my old bedroom? Fanya sat up and looked around. Although it was the place where she lived decades ago, everything here still felt familiar to Fanya. 
Just when Fang Ye suspected that this was the process of her entire life flashing before her as she lay dying, a small head suddenly poked in from the door. Mom! You're awake! A childish voice rang out. Fang Ye spun her head at the voice. It was indeed her daughter, Tang Tang. Fang Ye blinked her eyes frantically, trying to confirm that everything in front of her was real. In the next moment, Tang Tang jogged all the way to Fang Ye's arms. Mom, the butler said that you were not feeling well and didn't want me to come and disturb you, Tang Tang said aggrievedly. Fang Ye caressed her daughter's head lovingly, feeling the warmth of her body. Oh God! Is this a dream? If this is a dream, please let me never wake up for the rest of my life. Fang Ye prayed with all her heart. Chapter 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio This time, she was not letting go. Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Tang Tang continued complaining to Fang Ye. She said that the butler refused to buy her any delicious cakes and did not allow her to come to her mother's room to disturb her. As Fang Ye listened to her daughter's words, fragments of memories kept flashing through her mind. If all of this was real, then was she really reborn? Fang Ye hugged her daughter tightly, feeling the long dot lost warmth. She did not know what day it was, but since she was still here, it meant that she and Tang Fu had not divorced yet. Listening to her daughter's words, Fang Ye vaguely remembered that a month before her divorce from Tang Fu, she fell seriously ill. This illness caused her to be bedridden for half a month. Half a month later, she discovered a video of Tang Fu having an affair with a female secretary. The female secretary had barged into her home and said that she was pregnant with Tang Fu's child. She had tried to reason with Tang Fu, but did not expect Tang Fu to demand a divorce on the grounds that she had never given birth to a son. It only took two weeks for her to discover Tang Fu's affair. Fang Ye did not have any attachment to this marriage in the first place. The reason why the two of them got married was because Fang Ye's stepmother had received a huge gift from Tang Fu. This was an astronomical figure for the Fang family, who was in a rather difficult situation at the time. Her stepmother had used Fang Ye's dowry to buy a house for her biological son. She did not consider Fang Ye's future at all. If Fang Ye wanted to break off the marriage, she had to repay Tang Fu's dowry. Helplessly, Fang Ye married a man she did not love. At that time, Tang Fu was wholeheartedly in love with Fang Ye. He swore that he would not betray Fang Ye. As a famous nouveau riche in Qin City, Tang Fu was very well known for paying people to do whatever he wanted. However, Tang Fu had always been obedient to Fang Ye. He knew that Fang Ye did not like him mentioning money in front of her. Tang Fu had always deliberately avoided Fang Ye. Fang Ye had once thought that Tang Fu was true to her. Perhaps, there really was a period of time when he was. Fang Ye had once felt that she had really met the right person. Although Tang Fu was an uncultured person, fortunately, he was very good to Fang Ye. Fang Ye had thought that the two of them could live like this for the rest of their lives. It was not until an anonymous express delivery arrived at the Tang family when Fang Ye discovered the fact that her husband was having an affair. That, there's nothing to say. Let's divorce. When questioned, Tang Fu waved his hand impatiently and said in an unbothered fashion. Why? There was no sadness on Fang Ye's face, only confusion. I want a son. Tang Fu became even more agitated. Is that why you cheated? Fang Ye asked incredulously. I had no choice. Tang Fu said matter dot of dot factly. A daughter is a loser. My future property can only be inherited by my son. Tang Fu said coldly. Fang Ye was in greater disbelief when she heard Tang Fu's words about her daughter. At that moment, she finally made up her mind to divorce. Fang Ye patted the little head in her arms and pulled herself back from her memories. Since the heavens were willing to give her another chance, she would not repeat the same mistake. She must fight for what was hers to the end. 
she would not let herself and her daughter go through the same suffering. At that moment, the butler, Mr. Tang, knocked on the door and walked in. Madam, the master said that he won't be coming back to eat today. Fanya looked at Mr. Tang, nodded, and did not say anything. In the past, she had always thought that Tang Fu was busy with work and could not come home. She always told Mr. Tang to prepare nourishing soup for Tang Fu's body. Now it seemed that she had been the absolute fool. Mr. Tang saw that Fang Yit did not respond. He frowned and said, if there's nothing else, I'll head down first. Mr. Tang. Fang Yit suddenly called Mr. Tang. What's the date today? Mr. Tang was stunned for a moment. Although he was a little confused, he answered truthfully, September 2nd. Okay, you can go down now, Fang Yit said indifferently. In another two or three days, Fang Yit would discover the cheating video, and Tang Fu's secretary would come looking for her. At this moment, Fang Yit only had one thought. She wanted to do everything she could to fight for the best interests of herself and her child. Carrying her daughter, Fang Yit picked up the phone by the bed and dialed a number from her memory. Hello. Mrs. Tang. The other party picked up the phone and seemed a little surprised. Fang Ye replied with an affirmative grunt before saying, Lawyer Lin, I have something I would like to discuss with you. The other party hesitated for a moment before saying, OK. I'll go to the residence to look for you in the afternoon. No need. Fang Ye refused. I'll go to the law firm in the afternoon. Lawyer Lin did not respond. After a moment, he said, OK. I'll wait for you at the law firm. Fanya hung up, and her gaze met Tang Tang's, who was looking at her in confusion. Fanya smiled and said, Mommy will bring Tang Tang to have cake, okay? Okay. Tang Tang immediately beamed and said. Fanya hugged her daughter tightly again. This time, she would not let go again. Chapter 3 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Preparing for a Downpour Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Fang Ye brought Tang Tang to the mall to buy a cake. Then, they went to the law firm not far from the mall. Lawyer Lin was already waiting in the office. Tang Tang, why don't you go play with Xiao Xia for a while? Fang Ye asked after she opened the cake for Tang Tang. Tang Tang pouted and looked at Fang Ye somewhat unwillingly. Lin Bin gestured to his secretary, Xiao Xia. Xiao Xia immediately went forward and extended her hand to Tang Tang. I have a lot of toys over there. Tang Tang, can you go with me to take a look? Tang Tang immediately let go of Fang Ye's hand when she heard that there were toys. She obediently followed Xiao Xia out of the office. After the office door closed, Fang Ye immediately schooled her face and looked at Lin Bin. Lawyer Lin, I have something to ask you. Lin Bin looked at Fang Ye's solemn expression, and his heart skipped a beat. Fang Ye quickly caught on to his unnatural behavior. Lin Bin was Tang Fu's consultant lawyer. As a nouveau riche who did not know much about the law, Tang Fu had a lot of trust in Lin Bin. If Tang Fu had any private matters, he would definitely be the first to tell Lin Bin. Therefore, since Tang Fu already had the intention to divorce her, Lin Bin must have already known about it. Dot, Mrs. Tang, what is it that you want to ask? Lin Bin looked at Fang Ye with a professional smile on his face. Fang Ye pondered for a moment before asking, if I divorce Tang Fu, how much property will Tang Tang and I get? Hearing Fang Ye's question, Lin Bin was really shocked. He almost blurted out. How did you know? However, in the next moment, he stopped what he was about to say and asked instead, Why would you have such an idea, Mrs. Tang? It's just to prepare for a rainy day. Fang Ye picked up the coffee in front of her and took a light sip. The slightly bitter taste made Fang Ye unable to hold back a frown. If both parties are not at fault, the share of the husband and wife's common property should be divided equally, Lin Bin explained in detail. As for the issues of the child and education, 
they will be settled through further negotiations. Lin Bin continued. Fanya nodded and smiled bitterly. Tang Tang must be with me. Tang Fu. Doesn't like Tang Tang. Fanya lowered her head slightly. No one could see her expression. Perhaps Mr. Tang doesn't want to divorce you. Lin Bin tried to persuade her. Fanya raised her head and looked at Lin Bin with a burning gaze. Lin Bin subconsciously averted his gaze. Fanya smiled slightly. From Lin Bin's reaction, she could already imagine what the outcome would be. Let me get this straight, if one party made a mistake and a breach of the law somewhere, I. The other party can gain more. Fanya confirmed again. Lin Bin's gaze was fixed on Fanya's face, then he nodded. Yes. As long as there is sufficient evidence. Okay, I understand. Thank you for today, Lawyer Lin. Fanya said as she stood up. Lin Bin looked at Fanya's back and could not help but let out a soft sigh. Who knew that Fanya would raise her guard at this time? Lin Bin almost choked on the spot. I may need to trouble you again soon, Fanya said politely. Her tone was distant and polite. Before Lin Bin could answer, Fanya had already walked to the door of the office, opened the door, and left. Lin Bin had to admit that Fanya's personality, which was as gentle as spring, was really worlds apart from Tang Fu's. He did not know what Tang Fu had used to marry Fanya back then. Tang Tang was already two years old when Lin Bin got to know the two of them. Every time he saw Fanya, she would always smile lightly and not say much, giving people a quiet and elegant vibe. When he first met Fanya, Lin Bin had even suspected that Fanya was not particularly intelligent. Otherwise, why would she fall for a nouveau riche like Tang Fu? When the two of them stood together, they were like a skylark in the sky and a toad in the water. Lin Bin did not have much contact with Fanya, but he always felt that a man like Tang Fu was not worthy of her. Therefore, when Tang Fu told Lin Bin that he planned to divorce and marry a woman who could give birth to a son, Lin Bin had already decided to help Fanya fight for the rights she most deserved. When Fanya saw Tang Tang and Xiao Xia playing together, she could not be happier. Xiao Xia gave Fanya the impression of a lively and righteous girl. In her previous life, when she divorced Tang Fu, Xiao Xia had advised her many times to fight for herself and her child. But at that time, she only wanted to leave Tang Fu as soon as possible and did not want to have anything to do with him. When she decided to leave home with nothing, Xiao Xia had looked at her with eyes that were filled with disappointment, and she still remembered those eyes to this day. Chapter 4 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Former Home Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation, Xiao Xia, thank you for your hard work. Thank you. Fanya thanked Xiao Xia sincerely. This, thank you, was not only for now, but also for the girl who had once stood up for injustice. Xiao Xia looked at Fanya, and the corners of her mouth curled into a big smile. Mrs. Tang, you're too kind. Tang Tang is especially cute. I really like playing with her. Xiao Xia said and turned to look at Tang Tang. Isn't that right, Tang Tang? Tang Tang nodded. Yes. I also like you the most, Xiao Xia. Fan Ye smiled and went forward to take Tang Tang's hand. We still have things to do and have to leave first. You can come and play with Xiao Xia next time, okay? When Tang Tang heard that she was going to leave, her face immediately fell in a grievance. Mrs. Tang, why don't we let Tang Tang play for a while more? Xiao Xia tested the waters. Fanya flashed a deeper smile to Xiao Xia. Don't call me Mrs. Tang. Just call me Fanya. Ah. That's not good. Xiao Xia hesitated for a moment before saying, Then, can I call you Sister Ya? Of course. Fanya's smile deepened, and her tone grew lighter. Tang Tang looked at the two of them with a half dot understanding look. Then what should I call you, Sister Xiao Xia, Xiao Xia? 
Fang Ye and Xiao Xia were both stumped by Tang Tang's question. Following that, Xiao Xia raised her chin and said to Tang Tang, Just call me Sister Xiao Xia, then. Tang Tang replied with an O oh, and lowered her head to continue playing with the toy in her hand. Fang Ye stroked Tang Tang's hair lovingly before saying to Xiao Xia, I might have to trouble you to take care of Tang Tang for me in the future. No problem. Xiao Xia patted her chest. As Xiao Xia said this, she suddenly felt that something was wrong. She looked at Fang Ye skeptically. Sister Ye, you're. It's nothing. I might be busy in the future, Fang Ye took a deep breath and said. I don't have anyone I can trust in this city. So. Fang Ye looked at Xiao Xia with some embarrassment. Can you please take care of Tang Tang when I'm not here? Fang Ye asked again. Leave it to me. Xiao Xia immediately agreed. Sister Ye, don't take it to heart. Xiao Xia looked at Fang Ye's indifferent expression and felt her heart ache for her. Actually. Xiao Xia hesitated for a moment, but she still did not tell anyone what she had heard. She sighed and said, if you need my help, just tell me. Fang Ye knew Xiao Xia's good intentions and thanked her again. After leaving the law firm with Tang Tang, Fang Ye dug deep into her memories and walked into a deep alley. This was the place where her father had lived before he died. It was also the place where her stepmother had lived after she was chased out of the house by her daughter. In. Law. Ever since her father married a new wife, Fang Ye had had very little contact with the family. However, her stepmother had still traded her happiness in exchange for her son's marriage. After her father died, Fang Ye broke off contact with the family. This time, Fang Ye only remembered that her mother's dowry had not been given to Fang Ye before her father died. For Fang Ye, that was the only thing her mother had left for her. However, her father had used it as a betrothal gift for her stepmother, Xiao Xiang. In her previous life, Fang Ye had gone to Xiao Xiang's residence to look for her stepmother a few months after her divorce. However, it was only then that she heard that her stepmother had passed away not long ago. This was also a great regret for Fang Ye in her previous life. This time, she had to think of a way to get her mother's belongings back. Fang Ye walked into the alley. Both sides of the alley were piled with all kinds of miscellaneous items. It was difficult for the two of them to walk side by side in the alley. They walked all the way to the deepest part of the alley. A rusted and corroded iron door appeared in front of Fanya. Seeing her former home in such a dilapidated state, Fanya's heart was filled with sorrow. Mom, where is this place? Tang Tang asked curiously. Tang Tang had lived in a relatively affluent environment since she was young. She had never been to such a dilapidated place. To her, everything here was new and strange. Fang Ye took a deep breath and said, This. Used to be my home. Tang Tang looked at Fang Ye in confusion, as if she did not quite understand what, used to be my home, meant. At that moment, a woman pushed open the door from inside, holding a basin of water that was about to be splashed out. The woman looked up and saw the person in front of her and could not help but be startled. Fang Ye looked at the woman, and a trace of surprise flashed across her eyes. Noel Dun and the two of them stared at each other, not moving for a long time. Chapter 5 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. May I come in? Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless Fantasy Translation in Fang Ye's Impression. Her stepmother was a woman who was good at dressing up and always tidied herself up. Although Fang Ye had a bad relationship with her stepmother, she had to admit that her stepmother, Xiao Xiang, carried herself like the ideal lady. However, when she saw Xiao Xiang with disheveled hair and a dirty face, Fang Ye was truly shocked. Xiao Xiang had not expected to see Fang Ye again. After the initial shock, she felt even more embarrassed. Tang Tang pulled Fang Ye's hand and said, Mom, can we go into your house? Tang Tang's words made Xiao Xiang notice the little girl next to Fang Ye. She was a little girl who looked obedient and smart. 
She had inherited all of Fanya's strengths and not any of her father's genes. Fanya looked at Xiao Xiang and asked after a long while, Can. We come in. Xiao Xiang did not expect Fanya to make such a request. She was stunned for a moment before she said, Of course. She stood aside and let Fanya let her daughter in. Fanya walked into this familiar yet alien home. She looked around and stood in place without moving. Xiao Xiang placed the basin in her hand to the side and said, You guys sit. Fanya nodded and pulled Tang Tang to sit on the small couch by the side. Tang Tang looked at Xiao Xiang curiously, as if she wanted to see who this person at her mother's house was. This is. Your daughter, asked Xiao Xiang as she looked at Tang Tang, who blinked in return. Yes. Fanya nodded and then said to Tang Tang, call. She hesitated for a moment and then said, call her Mrs. Fang. Xiao Xiang smiled bitterly. She naturally knew that her relationship with Fangya was not good enough for Fangya's daughter to address her as her grandmother. Back then, for the sake of her son's marriage, she had not hesitated to sell Fangya to Tang Fu. It was natural for Fangya to hate her. Moreover, her son and daughter Dotin Dot Law had chased her out. What right did she have to ask Fangya to treat her better? Looking at the bitter expression on Xiao Xiang's face, Fangya pondered for a moment before getting straight to the point. I want my mother's belongings back, Fangya said bluntly. Xiao Xiang was stunned for a moment, then she nodded. Okay. Wait for me. Xiao Xiang walked into her room and took out a small box from a cabinet. This was her last remaining property, and it was also the property that she did not dare to dispose of privately. She knew that Fangya would one day come and take back her mother's memento. She had already snatched away the happiness of Fangya's father and Fangya's future. This memento was what Fangya was rightfully owed. Fangya looked at Xiao Xiang holding a small box and wiping the non existent dust off, treating it like treasure. Take a look. Xiao Xiang said and handed the small box to Fangya. Fanya stood up and took the small box. She opened the lock and saw her mother's memento placed safely inside. It was a pair of pure gold earrings and a pair of finely made pure gold bracelets. Fanya looked at the mementos, and her eyes immediately became moist. Keep them well. Xiao Xiang said, looking at Fanya with slight tenderness in her eyes. All these years. I've let you down. Xiao Xiang said sincerely. Fanya covered the box and said earnestly, Thank you. Xiao Xiang did not expect to hear Fanya's thanks, and her eyes also turned red. Tang Tang looked at Xiao Xiang curiously. Mrs. Fang, what's wrong? Xiao Xiang wiped her already slightly wet eyes. I'm happy. Tang Tang looked back and forth between Xiao Xiang and Fanya with a dubious look. Fanya suddenly remembered that Xiao Xiang had died of a sudden heart attack in her previous life. She looked at Xiao Xiang and asked sincerely, Are you? Okay. Are you feeling unwell? She asked as she looked at Xiao Xiang's slightly skinny appearance. Xiao Xiang's tears finally rolled down from the corner of her eyes. She shook her head and said, I'm fine. I'm fine. Tang Tang immediately took out her little handkerchief and handed it over. Mrs. Fong, my mother said that when you want to cry, you have to use a handkerchief to wipe your eyes. You can't use your hands to wipe your eyes. Xiao Xiang took the handkerchief with trembling hands and said to Fangya, You have really taught your daughter well. Xiao Xiang calmed down for a moment before saying, It's already noon. Why don't we? Eat before we leave, Fangya hesitated and did not reply immediately. However, Tang Tang opened her mouth at that moment. Mommy, I'm hungry. I will go and cook immediately. You can eat at once, Tang Tang. Without waiting for Fangya's reply, Xiao Xiang had already turned around and entered the kitchen. Chapter 6 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Ms. Fang Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor 
Endless fantasy translation at the end of the meal, Fang Ye and Xiao Xiang took in a much dot needed, rare moment of peace like never before. After the meal, Fang Ye left with Tang Tang. Before she left, she gave Xiao Xiang her cell phone number and told her to call her if she felt unwell. Fang Ye hugged her mother's belongings tightly in her arms. At that moment, she suddenly felt an unprecedented sense of relief. In her previous life, she had always lived in constant struggle and pain, burdened by scars of the past. Even after she left Tang Fu, she had never truly felt relieved or truly happy. But now, she realized that perhaps only by letting go of some things could she obtain more. She brought Tang Tang back to the Tang family where Uncle Tang welcomed her at the door. Madam, sir has returned. Fang Ye nodded. She did not return to the master bedroom but instead brought Tang Tang back to her room. Mother, I was very happy today. Tang Tang sat on her small bed, shaking her calves as she waited for Fang Ye to untie her braids. Fang Ye smiled and said sincerely, I was also very happy. Tang Tang turned her head to look at Fang Ye and asked sincerely, When are we going to go to Ms. Fang's house again? Do you like Ms. Fang? Fang Ye asked. For some reason, there was a hint of anticipation in her tone. Yes. Mother in laws cooking is really delicious. Tang Tang raised her hands and waved them as she said happily. A smile hung on Fang Ye's face. Okay. Then we'll go to Ms. Fang's house to eat another day. After hearing that, Tang Tang jumped up on the small bed. In her previous life, Fang Ye had been tied down by too many emotions and had lost too much. In this life, she decided to let go of all her worries and follow her heart. Perhaps everything would be different. After taking a shower with Tang Tang and coaxing her to sleep, Fang Ye returned to the master bedroom. The moment Fang Ye pushed the door open, Tang Fu hung up the phone. Fang Ye pretended not to see it and walked to the wardrobe to take out her pajamas. Then, she walked into the bathroom. Tang Fu looked at Fang Ye's appearance and inwardly gritted his teeth. When Fang Ye came out of the bathroom, she still ignored Tang Fu. Tang Fu finally could not hold it in anymore and asked angrily, Where did you go today? Fang Ye sat in front of the dressing table and quietly got to work on her skincare products. Seeing that Fang Ye did not answer, Tang Fu suddenly got up and quickly walked behind Fang Ye. I'll ask again, where did you go today? Fang Ye looked at Tang Fu from the mirror and said expressionlessly, to find Lawyer Lin. You. Tang Fu was suddenly angry. Why did you go to find Lawyer Lin? I had some legal questions that I wanted to ask, Fang Ye answered simply. Tang Fu glared at Fang Ye fiercely. What did you ask? About friends, Fang Ye answered perfunctorily. You. Have a friend. Tang Fu snorted, but he seemed to be relieved. Today, he heard the staff of the law firm saying that Fang Ye had gone to see Lawyer Lin. But when Tang Fu called Lawyer Lin to ask about the situation, Lawyer Lin had only replied that it was related to the privacy of the client and was not convenient to disclose it. Tang Fu was helpless and could only force Fang Ye to spit it out. Fortunately, both of them had said that it was about Fang Ye's friend, so Tang Fu was relieved. Your friend. If there's anything you need help with, let her come to me. Tang Fu sat by the bed and said to Fang Ye. Okay, Fang Ye answered unhurriedly. Tang Fu took no notice of Fang Ye's tone and only said, I, Tang Fu, don't have other abilities, but I'm rich. As Tang Fu said that, his smile became even more savage. Fang Ye did not want to pay attention to Tang Fu, so she walked to the other side of the bed and went to bed to rest. Tang Fu looked at Fang Ye's appearance and suddenly felt a little disappointed. The two of them had been married for so many years, and Fang Ye had always been cold to him. Originally, on account of Fang Ye's beauty and intelligence, Tang Fu had always been proud of marrying her. But now, there were many beautiful women around him, and as a mother, Fang Ye had grown even less charming. Dot Tang Fu muttered a few words and turned over to get on the bed. 
Fan Ye slowly opened her closed eyes and listened to the snoring sound beside her. After so many years, Fan Ye thought she had gotten used to this snoring sound, but it still sounded so harsh today. That night, Fan Ye had many dreams. From meeting Tang Fu for the first time to being forced to get married and have children, to the end of the divorce. In Fang Ye's dreams, she had left Tang Fu with her children and lived alone in another city. In order to give her children a better life, she worked all kinds of jobs. From cleaning to babysitting, Fang Ye would try to make money in whatever manner she could. She did not think of remarrying, because her previous marriage had made her lose confidence in men. When she was tired, she had hoped to have a shoulder to lean on. However, she was always alone until her death. Chapter 7 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Detective Agency Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation In her dream, the moment the doctor pulled out the oxygen tube, the feeling of rapid hypoxia and suffocation struck again. Fanya's eyes widened and she breathed hard. She tried hard to blink her eyes, trying to peer into the darkness. There was a decorated roof above her head, and she still heard the unceasing, thunderous snoring. Fanya exhaled lightly and turned around to distance herself from the snoring. Over the next few days, Fanya would go out every day. She would either buy some things or visit friends whom she had not seen for a long time. Occasionally, she would hear her friends talking about the various changes, which always made Fanya feel as if a lifetime had passed. Ever since Fang Ye got married, she had almost cut off all social contact. She had no friends or relatives. Ever since she met Xiao Xiang, Fang Ye seemed to have changed into a different person. She was more willing to walk towards her former life. She was waiting, waiting for the chance to truly be reborn. Finally, one morning, Fang Ye had just packed up her things and was ready to bring Tang Tang to find Xiao Xiao. Uncle Tang walked over and said that there was an unsigned document that he wanted to give to Fanya. Fanya took the document back. She was neither surprised nor confused. She calmly opened the document bag and saw the evidence of Tang Fu's infidelity. Fanya put away the evidence. She did not have any other reaction. Instead, she brought Tang Tang to the law firm. But when Lin Bin saw Fanya, he was hesitating about what to say. Fang Ye smiled and asked Lin Bin, Is Xiao Xia here? Lin Bin was a little surprised. He nodded blankly and said, Yes. Okay. As Fang Ye said that, she led Tang Tang inside. Lin Bin reached out his hand and called out, Wait a moment. Fang Ye turned her head to look at Lin Bin in confusion. What's the matter, Lawyer Lin? Lin Bin hesitated for a moment before he said, the matter you asked about last time. Fang Ye smiled at Lin Bin. There's no rush. Lin Bin looked at Fang Ye's confident look and felt that Fang Ye seemed to have already known something. Looking at Fang Ye's back view as she left, Lin Bin made up his mind to fight for the most rights and benefits for her as humanly possible. Because she deserved it. Fang Ye brought Tang Tang to find Xiao Xia and chatted with her for a while. Xiao Xia said mysteriously, President Tang brought a female secretary here that day. That woman was just clinging on to President Tang's body. She looked like she had no bones. Xiao Xia clicked her tongue and said. Fang Ye nodded and said, Thank you for telling me this. I'm just feeling sorry for you. Xiao Xia gritted her teeth and said, what right does that Tang Fu have? You're such a good woman, yet he still goes out and flirts with other women. Xiao Xia's tone was indignant, sounding very displeased for Fang Ye's sake. If you ask me, only a man like He Fong is worthy of you. Xiao Xia said with admiration in her eyes. He Fong. This name was not unfamiliar to Fang Ye. Many years later, this name would appear every day in the newspapers and news. He would become the most powerful man in the empire and become the general of the empire. However, at that moment, He Feng seemed to be having a headache over an ill dot suited marriage. Fang Ye knew that Xiao Xia was really doing this for her own good. 
Fang Ye patted Xiao Xia's shoulder in a comforting manner and said, It's all right, this. This is pretty good. Xiao Xia was stunned for a moment before saying, Right. This is pretty good. Hurry up and leave him. Don't worry. Lawyer Lin will definitely help you fight for the most possible rights and interests. Xiao Xia made a gesture of encouragement. Fang Ye smiled and said, Can you help me take care of Tang Tang for a while? I want to go out and take care of some things. Xiao Xia nodded heavily. No problem. I will take good care of Tang Tang. After Fang Ye thanked him, she followed the guidance of a friend and found a detective firm that specialized in investigating evidence of other people's infidelity. Fang Ye walked in and explained her situation. The other party sized up Fang Ye from head to toe and could not help but sigh, your man is really. With such a beautiful wife, he actually went out to look for other women. That person sighed, tsk tsk, what a waste of God's gift. Fang Ye ignored the other party's teasing and only took out a card, saying, this is half of the deposit. After the deed is done, I will pay the other half to you. The person took the card and sniffed it, then nodded. Fang Ye picked up her bag and left without any hesitation. Although Tang Fu was rich, he had always been very strict with Fang Ye's spending. These few days, Fang Ye had been buying things and selling them for money. She finally had enough money. Fang Ye had to collect enough evidence to really get everything she wanted. When Fang Ye returned to the law firm, she saw Tang Fu rushing over. The two of them met at the door. Tang Fu frowned and looked at Fang Ye. What are you doing here? Tang Tang said that she wanted to play with Xiao Xia, so she came over, Fang Ye answered without hesitation. Tang Fu frowned deeply and looked at Fang Ye with doubt. Chapter 8 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Reason for Divorce Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless Fantasy Translation Fang Ye came to the reception room and saw that Tang Tang was already asleep on the sofa. Xiao Xia was carrying a laptop and sitting at the side, working seriously. Fang Ye walked in. When Xiao Xia saw her, she immediately stood up, but when she saw Tang Fu behind her, her expression changed slightly. Sister Ye, Tang Tang was tired from playing just now, so she fell asleep. As Xiao Xia said this, her gaze swept over Tang Tang. Fang Ye walked forward gratefully. Sorry to trouble you. Xiao Xia said nonchalantly, it's all right. It's nothing. It's my fault for liking Tang Tang so much. She glanced at Tang Fu again and said, since you're back, I'll go to work first. Otherwise, Lawyer Lin will deduct my salary in a while, Xiao Xia said as she held her notebook and left. Fang Ye walked to Tang Tang's side and gently stroked Tang Tang's forehead, which was slightly covered with sweat. Xiao Xia carefully covered her with a blanket. Tang Tang slept very comfortably. I need to talk to you, Tang Fu said. He walked to the sofa on the other side and sat down. Fang Ye did not speak, nor did she turn her head to look at Tang Fu. Tang Fu saw that Fang Ye was ignoring him. He hesitated for a moment before saying, let's divorce. Fang Ye did not raise her head. She only responded with an mm and gently patted Tang Tang's body. Seeing that Fang Ye was completely unmoved, Tang Fu's brows furrowed tightly. I will give you what you deserve, so that you and your daughter can live comfortably for the rest of your lives. Tang Fu gave what he thought was the most generous condition. Fang Ye's reply was still an mm. Tang Fu was getting a little angry. Can you give me some reaction? I feel like I'm talking to a mannequin, staring off into the distance with those dead dot fish eyes. Tang Fu said with some irritation. Fang Ye finally turned her head and looked at Tang Fu. Do what you want to do, hearing Fang Ye's indifferent answer, Tang Fu instantly exploded. It's always like this. Tang Fu said angrily, can't you give me a normal reaction? What is a normal reaction? Fang Ye looked up at Tang Fu and asked. Just. 
Tang Fu was stunned for a moment. He did not think about what kind of reaction was normal. At least you have to ask me the reason for the divorce. Tang Fu held it in for a long time and finally came up with a question. Okay. Fang Ye said obediently, why do you want to divorce? Tang Fu answered fiercely, I don't like you anymore. I want to find a woman who can give birth to a son for me. Tang Fu glared at Tang Tang who was lying on the sofa. Before Tang Fu could say something even more outrageous, Fang Ye suddenly stopped him. Let's get divorced. Tang Fu's words were stuck in his mouth. Then, he smacked his lips and said, that's for the best. I'll give you a result that you're satisfied with, Tang Fu promised. Fang Ye grunted and ignored him. Tang Fu did not expect that it would be so easy to talk to Fang Ye about a divorce. He always felt that with Fang Ye's character, even if she agreed to a divorce, she would definitely give him some trouble. However, he did not expect Fang Ye to agree so readily. Tang Fu felt that Fang Ye seemed to be scheming something. However, since Fang Ye agreed, Tang Fu did not intend to say anything more. In that case, let's go and sign the papers. Fang Ye looked at the sleeping Tang Tang. Tang Tang is still sleeping. Wait for her to wake up. Tang Fu gritted his teeth and dismissed the idea of directly pulling Tang Tang up. He sat on the sofa and panted heavily. After waiting for about half an hour, Tang Fu suddenly received a phone call. What? Okay. I'll be right there. Tang Fu said anxiously. He stood up and said to Fang Ye, I have something to do. I'll leave first. We'll sign the paperwork tomorrow. Fang Ye did not reply. She continued to gently pat Tang Tang. Fang Ye knew that this phone call was from Tang Fu's female secretary. At this moment, the female secretary was using the reason of wanting to abort the child to force Tang Fu to get a divorce. However, she did not expect that her actions would backfire. After Tang Fu left, Lin Bin appeared at the door of the meeting room. He looked at Fang Ye and hesitated for a moment before saying, What do you want? I will try my best to write it all into the divorce agreement. Fang Ye slowly stood up and looked at Lin Bin. She said word by word, I want two dot thirds of his assets. Lin Bin could not help but be a little stunned when he heard Fang Ye's words. Then, he nodded and agreed, okay. Chapter 9 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Please, divorce him. Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless Fantasy Translation Fang Ye brought Tang Tang back to the Tang family. After dinner, she washed up and went to bed. Tang Fu did not come back for the whole night. Early the next morning, Fang Ye was changing Tang Tang's clothes when she heard noises coming from outside. She could not hear clearly what was said, but she could tell who it was with that sharp voice. She smiled mockingly and prepared some food for Tang Tang. She turned on the cartoon, turned up the volume, and left. Walking into the living room, Fang Ye saw Yang Nua with her hands on her waist, pointing at Uncle Tang and cursing. Yang Nua was none other than Tang Fu's secretary and lover. Looking at her flat stomach, Fang Ye could not help but laugh. In her previous life, when Yang Nua brought the ball to look for her, Fang Ye had been terrified. At that time, she did not know what Tang Fu had done, she was just scared out of her wits. She did not know how to differentiate it at all, she could only be led by the nose by Yang Nuo. Yang Nuo told her that Tang Fu was already tired of her old age, he had already planned to drive her and her daughter out of the house. Fang Ye was urged by Yang Nuo to question Tang Fu. Who knew that when she questioned him, Tang Fu would immediately admit that he wanted a divorce. At that time, Fang Ye's only thought was the sadness of being betrayed. How could she care about anything else? Now that she looked at Yang Nuo's appearance, Fang Ye really felt that it was funny. She took a few steps forward and looked at Yang Nuo with a cold gaze. Yang Nuo, what are you doing in our house so early in the morning? Is Uncle Tang someone you can scold as you please? 
Do you not want to be a secretary anymore? Fang Ye questioned coldly. When Yang Nua saw that the main character had come out, her gaze immediately became a little aggrieved. When Uncle Tang saw Fang Ye come out, his expression became a little ugly. Madam, this. Fang Ye smiled at Uncle Tang and said, It's fine, Uncle Tang. You should go and rest first. Uncle Tang frowned and wanted to say something, but he was signaled by a look in Fang Ye's eyes, so he shook his head and left. Fang Ye saw Yang Nua's instantly aggrieved look, so she walked up and asked, You came here this early in the morning. What's the matter? Yang Nua suddenly knelt on the ground, her hands tightly clutching the hem of Fang Ye's clothes. I beg you, I beg you. Can you divorce Ah Fu? Fang Ye naturally put on a frown, her head slightly lowered as she looked at Yang Nua. Yang Nua's eyes shone brightly, looking like she was about to cry. Any man who saw this would definitely feel some pity in their hearts. Unfortunately, Fang Ye was not a man. Fang Ye took a step back, looking at Yang Nua grabbing her hand, her expression was slightly displeased. Let go of me first. Fang Ye was not displeased by Yang Nua's words. Instead, she found her hands so dirty. Yang Nua refused to let go and continued to hold on to Fang Ye tightly. I beg you. I have no other way. Stand up first. If you have anything to say, say it. Fang Ye's tone was slightly impatient. Seeing this, Yang Nua let go of Fang Ye's hand and stood up to oppose Fang Ye. Fang Ye walked to the sofa and sat down, motioning for Yang Nua to take a seat on the sofa at the side. Yang Nua bit her lower lip before walking over and sitting down on the sofa at the side. Speak. Fang Ye crossed her arms in front of her chest and looked at Yang Nua. Yang Nua wiped the tears that did not fall from the corners of her eyes with a pained expression. Sister Ye, I. Yang Nua said, looking very pitiful. I don't want to disturb your life, but I. I couldn't help it. Yang Nua said as she squeezed out a tear. Ah Fu and I are truly in love. Yang Nua said as she stared at Fang Ye's face, observing her expression. Fang Ye did not respond, only watching Yang Nua's performance. When Yang Nua saw that Fang Ye did not respond, her heart suddenly felt a little nervous. But since she was here today, she could not return empty. Handed. Yang Nua moved closer to Fang Ye's side. I'm pregnant with his child now. The doctor said that I can only have this child for the rest of my life. I don't want to lose him. Yang Nua said, looking very pitiful. Fang Ye looked at Yang Nua and finally knew why she had risked everything to force her to leave. Yang Nua could no longer have her own child. For some reason, this realization made Fang Ye's heart slightly relax. When Yang Nua came to look for her, Fang Ye had only heard her words and believed it. It was only after the divorce that Fang Ye knew that Yang Nua's child had already fallen. Now that she listened to her words again, this must be the reason why she was so desperate. Chapter 10 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Forcing a Divorce Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless Fantasy Translation The corner of Fang Ye's mouth curled up slightly, looking almost provocative to Yang Nuo. Yang Nuo's heart skipped a beat. She secretly swore in her heart that she would get Fang Ye to agree to the divorce no matter what. This was her last chance. Tang Fu was her last bet, and she could not let go no matter what. Fang Ye, on the other hand, felt that Tang Fu was laughable in her heart. He wanted a son with all his heart, and he probably would not be able to have a son with this woman in front of him in this lifetime. However, in Fang Ye's memory, Tang Fu and Yang Nua gradually fell out after they got together. She could not remember if there were any children between the two of them. She only remembered that Tang Fu did not have a son by his side to be filial to. But from the beginning to the end, Tang Fu and Yang Nua did not divorce. Perhaps, she and Tang Fu had been a mismatch since the beginning, so they could not really go on. Seeing Fang Ye's mocking attitude, 
Yang Nua was very unhappy. Yang Nua stood up and looked at Fang Ye from top to bottom. You. Are you going to divorce him? Fang Ye tilted her head slightly and looked at Yang Nuo. I'm still married to him. So what? Yang Nuo said indifferently. You've seen the things I sent you. Yang Nuo snorted. You should know that he doesn't love you. You're cheating. Fang Ye's tone was still calm. The expression on Yang Nuo's face had become a little ferocious. I advise you to divorce him as soon as possible. He doesn't love you. Yang Nua said and puffed out her chest, looking very confident. There won't be a future between the two of you. He promised me that he would raise this child with me. Yang Nua said with a satisfied smile on her face. She reached out her hand and gently touched her stomach, looking so pleased with herself. Divorce him quickly. Yang Nua became arrogant. Otherwise, you will only become a woman who has been abandoned. Okay. Under Yang Nua's repeated attacks, Fang Ye only said this calmly. Yang Nua was about to be impassioned, but she did not want to be choked back by Fang Ye's words. She blinked her eyes, seemingly a little confused. Fang Ye simply kept looking at her, her expression unchanged. After a while, Yang Nua asked in a daze, What did you say just now? I said yes. Fang Ye still had a smile on her face. She stood up and looked at Yang Nuo. Didn't Tang Fu tell you yesterday? Fang Ye's expression was full of sarcasm. Yesterday, he already said that he wanted to divorce me. Yang Nuo was dumbfounded. What she had done today actually looked so ridiculous. Fang Ye turned to Uncle Tang, who had been hiding not far away, and said, Uncle Tang, see the guest out. Uncle Tang immediately rushed out and pulled Yang Nuo's arm, wanting to pull her out. Yang Nuo was naturally dissatisfied with such a result. She wanted to say something, but Uncle Tang forcefully pulled her away. At first, Uncle Tang had originally wanted to chase her away without Fang Ye's knowledge. Who knew that Fang Ye would suddenly appear? This matter could not be hidden anymore. Seeing that Fang Ye had managed to subdue Yang Nuo with just a few words, Uncle Tang originally felt some comfort in his heart. However, when he heard that Fang Ye had agreed to divorce Tang Fu, Uncle Tang also felt a little regretful. Although Fang Ye rarely smiled at home, she still respected him as a butler. She was gentle and indifferent, giving people a feeling of being aloof from worldly affairs. However, Uncle Tang knew that if anything touched her bottom line, she would definitely fight back with all her might. Especially, when it threatened to harm Tang Tang. After sending Yang Nuo away, Uncle Tang could not help but shake his head and sigh. This family will probably be in turmoil in the future. Uncle Tang was originally a distant relative of Tang Fu and could be considered Tang Fu's uncle. Uncle Tang had been working as a butler in a rich family and had a lot of experience in this area. After Tang Fu became rich, he invited Uncle Tang to come over and work as a butler in his own family. Since they were all relatives, naturally, he could treat Uncle Tang better. Furthermore, Uncle Tang was getting old and thought that going to Tang Fu's house could be considered as going to a home for the elderly. It was only after coming to Tang Fu's house that Uncle Tang truly understood the true face of a nouveau riche. Tang Fu did not have any other faults, but he loved to flaunt his wealth too much. He bragged about how rich he was and how he threw away all his money. However, his family was just a middle dot class family in the city. Such a family with a housekeeper was really considered a luxury. Fortunately, Fang Ye was not a woman who liked to splurge. She had always been diligent and thrifty. She would try her best to help with family matters. Therefore, Uncle Tang had a good impression of Fang Ye. Ever since he got married to Fang Ye, Tang Fu seemed to have gotten lucky. He could invest in anything successfully. As a boor, Tang Fu actually relied on this luck to open a company and become a boss. After all this, Tang Fu really thought he was a big shot. And because of this, today's matter had come up. 